Welcome back. Now, it is now 30 years since the demise of the late uh, then doyen of opposition politics, Jaramugi Oginga Odinge. The family of the late Odinge has lined up a series of events to commemorate the 30th anniversary of Kenya's first vice president on Saturday. The memorial ceremony will be held at um, at the Ofafa Memorial, Ho Memorial Hall in Kisumu, where the role of Jaramogi in shaping the country's democracy will be highlighted. Brahma Bwire spoke to Jaramogi's close allies, and here is what they said about Jaramogi Oginga Odinga. He is one of the country's famous son, whose names remain in the country's history as a man who took part in the struggles for independence. He is also remembered as the doyen of opposition politics and the leader in the forefront for the return of multi-party politics in the 1980s and the 1990s. The Ramogi could have been the best, the, the best president Kenya never had. I think that best, the Ramogi was the best president Kenya never had. There were instances when he told us, you know, that, you know these people can, took away, Kenyatta away from me. But if I can get if I could I can get Kenyatta back, then things will be back on on, on course. His then close confidants believe that the legacy Yaramogi built continues to inspire the country positively. His contribution to Kenya in attaining independence was immense and was the force behind Kenya's first president Jomo Kenyatta to ascend to power. Yaramogi didn't want to make the mistake of him coming out that I'm now leader of Kenya when the people who should be here with me to I wrote there I think he was a real nationalist you know in that regard people support what he stood for because it stood for what is right and what is just and that is replicated in Kenya the continent and indeed um, in the rest of the world because Jarabogi had friends uh, beyond the continent of Africa in an interview with KT News, CIA Governor James Orengo recounts how the news of Jaramogi's death broke his heart and left a gaping hole in the country. On that fateful day, he had an appointment with Mze Jaramogi. From the airport, instead of going to the residence, I went directly, directly to Agakan Hospital. And uh, he was... Uh, uh, already in a terrible condition uh, under oxygen and uh, of course not recognize me on the national front Jaramogi fell out with the first Kenyan president Mzee Jomo Kenyatta in 1966 and resigned as the vice president he started advocating for multi-party system this push continued even after Kenya became a de jure one-party state in 1982. Jaramogi, though elderly, became the face of the opposition in the 1980s and the 1990s and became the first opposition leader in parliament after the introduction of multipartism in the 1990s. See, Jaramogi and old men like Morir and so on, Moi had virtually marginalized in politics and they were really under, under surveillance as it were. So we decided the young people can't just sit idle and not doing something about changing our country. And we started organizing. I became the executive director of Ford and Ford Kenya, more or less a secretary to Jaramogi, writing his speeches and working with him. So we, we grew very close, really. At the family level, however, Oburu Odinga, his eldest son, says that despite his father's wish to raise them like any other children, constant wars with Moi and Kenyatta's regime made sure they missed the fatherly figure. Uh, as a family, we lost tremendously because of those detentions. The Aramogi was a very big and successful businessman, but his businesses were destroyed when he was in detention. He was running a very successful uh, bus company called Lolwe Transporters Limited, which at that time had more than 52 buses running all over, having routes all over uh, Kenya, in Rift Valley, in Nairobi, to Tanzania, Tarime, and uh, beyond, and uh, uh, going to 
different parts of Kenya. And uh, this was all destroyed in the absence of, of Jaramogi. Oburu says his father's main cause of death was constant detentions and house arrest he was subjected to. When he came out of detention, he was not the same Jaramogi we knew before he went to detention. He came completely emaciated. He was very, very thin. He was completely, he, I mean, he was almost, uh, his voice was almost uh, uh, lost. He was, ho it was hoarse and uh, very, very inaudible. So uh, the life in detention, I believe, personally, uh, is what uh, uh, caused Jaramogi to die at an uh, early age. He would have died much, much later. John Oyua, a veteran journalist, too recounts how it was covering Jaramogi Ogingo Dinga, the politician. One of the stories I remember, was I was sent to cover Jaramogi uh, in a place called Oyugis, that was in Hono Bay County. He was going for a funeral. That day, Jaramogi made a statement. He told Moi, the former president, leave my son alone come for me instead and leave my son Raela. That time Raela had problems with the state, you remember? You remember? So uh, that time Raela was being hounded by the police all the time. So on that day, Jaramogi stood up and told Monas, I'm asking Moy, please leave my son alone. Jaramogi is also remembered for initiating key legacy projects that left an indelible mark in Nyanza and Kenya as a whole. This country uh, is poor actually uh, without him. But again, whatever we have right now in terms of our leadership, in, term of, in terms of our democratic space, is largely attributed to this gallant son of Kenya. The very agitation that Jaramogi Ogingo Dinga had when the government was fiercest. Today our government is toothless because the new constitution has given us a lot of latitude to talk about everything. On Saturday, family, relatives and friends will gather in Kisumu and Nairobi to mark 30 years since his death in Kisumu. The celebrations will be held at St. Stephen's Cathedral and later at Ufafa Memorial Hall where there will be a panel discussion on the life of Jaramogi and how his firebrand politics changed the Kenya's political history. Simba, Mama, Kire, the Kenya Tobacco Control Alliance has called on the government to ban the use of nicotine products rather than regulate them.